so let's study some of the basic terms related to this lens okay as i said we are only going to study about biconcave and biconvex lens so this is biconvex lens or which we call as a convex lens and this is biconcave lens which is just called as a concave lens understood good now as you can see in this structure this part is a curved one which looks like part of a circle right to be clear it will be a part of a sphere but in this case it looks like a circle and this is also it is a part of another circle similarly here in concentric circle this one and just like in a circle we have center and radius just like we have seen in case of concave and convex mirror similarly here also we would have the center of curvature and also the radius of curvature okay but instead of one we have two circles here so we would have two center of curvatures okay so one for each circle and the line passing through this two center of curvatures or is called as the principal axis and always remember okay that the distance of this center of curvature both sides should be same in all cases the center of the lens is called as optical center and is represented as o okay this represented as o in the last video we saw that in case of a convex lens parallel light ray they intersect at one point or they converge at one point and that point in this case is called as focus so since center of curvature is from both side we have focus on both side okay here also now as you can see in both these cases there are two focus f1 and f2 here also but which one is the actual focus that is we that we would use most of the time recall what you have studied in reflection you studied that focus is a point where the parallel light rays generally meet or appear to meet right so in this case also from the last video if you recall then for convex lens after refraction they meet at the other side of the lens so this is the actual focus f2 Huh? Actual focus for convex lens. In this case, they diverge, right? Okay. In this case, Okay, the light ray after refraction they diverge, and the diverge as if they are coming from this point. So in this case, F one can be considered as the actual focus. Understood? Good. So now we are going to study how image is formed in these two lenses. Okay. So in order to know how images are formed, we need two refracted rays okay or two emergent rays and to know that we need to know how different rays are how different rays emerges in a lens either it may be a concave lens or convex lens how it emerges so let's see what are the different type of incident rays in this case so let's see what are the different types of in incident rays in case of refracting lens okay so the first is parallel ray when the incident ray that is 
when the incident ray is parallel to the lens. Okay, first we will see convex lens. Okay, convex lens. This is the optical center. C one, C two, F one. We all know that in case of a convex lens, when the light ray is parallel to the principal axis, then the, when the incident ray is parallel to the lens, and it is sorry, when the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, then the emergent ray will pass through F two. Okay, that's not good. Is it? That's not okay. So always remember, you have to draw this diagram using ruler and pencil. Okay. So this is the emergent ray. Okay. So that's why convex lens. This is convex lens. Convex lens are called as converging lens. Now let's see for concave lens. Concave lens. Incident ray. Next, second one will go when the, the incident ray passes through the focus. Incident ray passing through focus. Okay, which focus? The other focus. Means in this case F one. In this case F two. Understood? Passing through focus. That is, in this case, when the incident ray is passing through F one, okay. when the incident ray is passing through. F one, okay. In this case, what will happen? The emergent ray will move parallel to principal axis. Okay. The same is seen in case of a convex lens. Sorry, concave lens. This is the concave lens. Principal axis, optical center. End of curvature C one. Focus F one. Then F two. Okay. Now, what I said for this case, if the incident ray is passing through the focus, means here F two, it resembles to F two. If the incident ray is going towards the direction of F two, this comes suppose like this, that it will intersect F two. Then after refraction, the emergent ray will move parallel to principal axis. Okay. Although it's not looking like, but it will move parallel to principal axis. So this is the two incident rays. One more is there to we'll study. Now pause the video and note it down. So the next case, 
is when the incident ray is passing through the optical center. Okay, let's see for convex lens. This is the optical center. C1, F1, F2, C2. Okay. So, what will happen? If the incident ray is passing through the optical center, then it will move undeviated, means there will not be any refraction. Okay. The light will move along the same path, there will not be any refraction. In case of concave lens also, we can say the same thing. For concave lens, the same thing is same. Optical center, F1, C1, F2, C2. Okay. If the incident ray is passing through the optical center, then it will move undeviated. Okay. No deviation, there won't be any bending okay, when it passes through the optical center. Understood? So, these are the three incident rays, and out of these three, we can we have to take any two. By taking any two incident rays, we can study how the images are formed in a convex and concave lens. Okay, note this one. Okay. So, you understood the three incident rays and how the emergent rays occur in this case. So let's see how images are formed in this lenses. First, we would see for convex lens. If you recall, in case of mirrors, the converging mirror, which mirror is called as the converging mirror? Hmm? Good. Concave mirror. Concave mirror was called as the converging mirror. And convex mirror is called as the diverging mirror. But in case of lens or refraction, the case is just opposite. Here, convex lens is the converging lens and concave lens is the diverging lens. So, here the case is just being opposite. So, recall that in case of a concave mirror, you have six reference points, means six places where an object can be placed. Similarly, here also, in case of convex lens, we have six different places where you can keep an object. What are the six different cases? I tell you, if Suppose, this is a convex lens, this is optical center, F1, C1, F2, C2, okay. So, six different cases, first when the object is at infinity, second when the object is beyond center of curvature or beyond C1. Third, when the object is on C1. Fourth, when the object is between C1 and F1. Fifth, when the object is on F1. And sixth, when the object is between F1 and O. Focus and optical center. The same, what you have studied for concave mirror. But here, we will study it for convex lens. Let's see the first case. When the object is at infinity. Okay. When the object is at infinity, the light ray, what is coming from the object will always be parallel to the principal axis. Okay. When the object is at infinity, so this are going to be the incident rays. And we know if the rays are parallel, then after refraction, the emergent ray will intersect at The emergent ray will intersect at focus F2. Okay. So we can say when the object is at infinity, the image is formed. The image is formed at focus F2. Okay, at focus F2. What will be the nature of the image? Okay, if it was a mirror, 
then this would be a virtual image. But in case of lens, the image which is formed beyond the lens is called as real image. And the image which is formed in front of the lens is called as virtual image. So the nature in this case will be real and inverted. Okay? And size it is highly diminished. Highly diminished. Or it is called as point size. Point size. Understood? Good. Move to the next concept. When the object is beyond C1. Okay, when the object is beyond C1. So this is convex lens, optical center, this one C1 to C2. Okay, let's keep the object here. Here is the object. Okay, A, B, beyond set of curvature at a finance distance. Let's see if this is the incident ray parallel to the principal axis, emergent ray passing through the focus. Okay, and we will take another ray passing through F1. Okay, but it will go, it will move parallel to the principal axis. So, this is the point of intersection. So, here the image is formed. Okay. So, what do you see here? Well, the object is beyond C1. In case of a convex lens, the image form is between F2 and C2. Okay. So, can I look? When object is beyond C1. The image is formed between C2 and F2. Okay, what is the nature? It is real and inverted. Okay, size diminished. Okay, understood? Now, if you see this case, okay, when the image is formed at the focus, a highly diminished point size image is uh, formed at the focus, this principle, this principle of convex lens is used in the burning glass lens. You might have played when you are quite small, you might have burnt paper using magnifying lens, right? That burning happens due to this principle. Okay. Burning glass lens. Okay. Burning glass lens. Okay. Good. Now note it down. Now let's move on to the next thing that when the object is a little bit more closer towards the lens, that is, when the object is on C1, okay, okay, when the object is on C1. Suppose this is the object. Okay, let's see how the image is formed. I will read. This will, after refraction, pass it through F2. Now we take another ray, like uh, this take the same one. Okay, after refraction, this ray will move parallel to principal axis. This is the point of intersection. So this is where the image is formed. Okay. 
Understand? So in this case, what we can conclude is that that if the object is on C1, the image is found on C2. Okay. And the object is on C1. The image is formed on C2. Nature, as you can see, it's real and inverted. Okay, real and inverted size. You can see it is of same size. Okay. This principle, this concept is used in compound microscope. In compound microscope, the objective piece. Okay. So what happens when when you keep an object in a when you keep a slide in a microscope, the image formed from the lens is generally enhanced, right? It is magnified. But since convex lens is used in microscope, the image form will be inverted but in order to see it properly sometimes in microscope another convex lens is used so that image what you would see would be erect and the same principle sometimes is used in telescopes also okay this is the principle the next let's see what happens when the object is between c1 and f1 okay this is the optical center. Here. Suppose this is the object. This is the emergent ray now taking from F1 to magnetic remote parallel. This is the point of image formation. The image is formed beyond C. Okay, when the so in case of a convex lens. When the object is between C1 and F1, the image is formed beyond C2. Okay? An enlarged image is formed. So what we can write? We can say when the object is between C1 and F1. The image is formed. The image is formed beyond C two. The image is formed beyond C two. Nature real and inverted. Nature is real and inverted. Size. You can see it is enlarged. I hope you all, uh, most of you, or more, uh, or all of you, might have always been to a movie hall, okay, to watch a movie, right? Or you might have seen in a projector, right? So what happens? This principle it is used in a slide projector, or what you see in movie, slide projector. Okay. But the condition is that the film, okay, which is to be played in that projector, should be kept upright or inverted. Should be kept inverted so that the image form will be upright. Okay. So this principle is used in slide projector. This concept. Understood? Pause the video and note it down. So let's move on to the next.
place where the object will be that is on f1 okay so when the object is on f1 let's see where the image will be formed okay so this ray is going for the focus and if you draw another ray we can take it from focus right because the object is on focus so we'll take the ray incident ray such that it will pass through the optical center and the incident ray when it passes through the optical center it moves undeviated so you can see these two refractive emergent rays these two emergent rays they are parallel to each other so that they are not going to intersect anywhere nearby so we can hope that they will intersect at infinity so generally at infinity it is considered that parallel rays will intersect for example the horizon okay when you see uh, when you stand at a beach and look towards the vast sea you can see at the at the horizon the sea and the sky appear to meet right but they are always parallel to each other so that's why we can say at infinity they will meet okay so when the object is on f1 the image is formed image is formed at infinity okay when the object is at f1 the image is formed at infinity what would be the nature okay the nature is real as the, as the image is formed next to the lens and inverted because they will meet below principal axis only so real and inverted size is highly enlarged highly enlarged so when the object is on focus the image is formed where at infinity and generally this concept or this principle is used in a device okay in a device to uh, calculate some if the calculate the wavelength of light called collimator it is used in collimator collimator is a device which you will study in higher classes that which is used generally in a spectrometer that is used to measure the wavelength of light or such phenomena okay now the last but not the least the case of convex lens where the object is between f1 and o f1 and optical center it is a special case okay so pay attention okay the incident ray parallel incident ray and the emitted ray will pass through f1 sorry f2 and if you take from optical center the light ray will move in this way so and if we consider this as the path so they are not going to intersect anywhere but if we extend in the, in the opposite direction okay. so they intersect at a point here so here is the image form in this case okay looks to other a little bit bent but draw it straight okay using ruler red pencil so when when the object is between f1 and optical center when the object is be between f1 and optical center the image is formed the image is formed beyond c1 or on the or you can say on the same side of the object on the same side of object what is the nature in this case in this case the nature is virtual and electric 
virtual and error. Size, the size will be enlarged. And can you guess where this principle, this concept is used for our own benefit? It is used. Hmm? Any guess? Okay, I'll tell you. It is used in the magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. When we see an object in a magnifying glass, okay, it works on this principle. Okay, that's why we see an enlarged image of that object, right? We take it completely nearer to the object. Okay, understood? Now pause the video and note it down. Okay. So that was all of different cases or different images formed in case of a convex lens and where it is used. Now we can say its applications. Now we will see different cases for concave lens and its applications. Recall, as I have said earlier in this video, that convex lens shows the property of concave mirror and concave lens shows the property of convex mirror. So in case of convex mirror, there are only two places where we can keep an object. Similarly, in concave lens also, there are only two places where an object is placed, that is at infinity and between infinity and optical center. Anyway, okay, so let's see how image is formed and where it is used. First, when the object is at infinity, so since the object is at infinity, the light ray coming from the infinity will be parallel and we know that for a convex for a concave lens, parallel incident rays emerges such that it is coming from focus, right? So this ray, they are not going to intersect, but if you produce it backward, they are intersecting at F1. So in this case, we can say, when the object is at infinity the image is formed the image is formed at f1 nature since the image is formed on the same side as that of the object it is virtual and erect virtual and array. Size, as you can see, it is highly diminished, highly diminished, or you can say point size. Point size. Now, where does this concept, this principle is used? It is used in flashlights. It is used in Flash lens. As you know, that concave lens, they are also called as diverging lens. So, in flashlight, the light diverges so that it can cover a bigger area. Okay? Understood? Good. Moving to the next one. But the object is anywhere between infinity and optical center. We can keep it anywhere. Let's keep it here. This is the object. So, let's see where the image will be formed. It will move like this as if it is coming from F1. Okay, now let's take from towards F2 if we take. Then this ray is suppose it is going towards F. Then we know that after M refraction it will move parallel to principal axis okay now these two rays they are not going to intersect with each other but if you extend it backward this is where they intersect so this is where the image is formed right you can see right this is the image this is the object a b this one is a dash the image is found here. Okay, so you can say when the object 
is at a finite distance at a finite distance the image is formed where the image is formed it is formed between it is formed between f1 and o the image is formed between f1 and o what is the nature i will show nature is virtual virtual and l okay size diminish okay the size is diminish and this thing this concept is used in peep holes you know what are peep holes hmm okay for those who don't know what are peep holes you might have seen in uh, in some houses in those they have small opening okay and the glass will be fit will be there uh, there a glass will be attached to it and the person who is inside the home inside the house they that person can see who is outside okay but the outside person can't see anything inside okay that structure that structure is called as peep hole and the lens which is used there is concave lens okay so these are the uses of convex and concave lens and this is how images are formed so you can conclude that for a convex enlarged image we have to refer to a convex lens because in a convex lens only enlarged images form but in case of concave lens you can see only diminished small images form as you seen in the earlier video okay so this is for now have a nice day thank you and do practice the ray diagrams properly okay